All right, so we've got our connection to MetaMask working now. We have our wallet ID being pulled in. Now the next step is to use the OpenSea API, pass it that wallet ID, and get a list of assets. So to set up our page for that, um, I want to add a grid here. And this grid is where we will load the uh, results that we get from OpenSea. So I'm going to add a grid list element and drop that here. And I'm going to add a new page for my grid list row. And I'm going to call this uh, asset row. So that'll be our asset row page. Um, and I'll just move that over here. Um, back on our main page, I'm going to select the grid list. And over on the right hand side where it says row page, I'm just going to go ahead and connect that to asset row so that uh, it knows what the child page is now. Um, so on this child page, what I want to have is an image and this image will be the picture of our NFT um, for the image source it's going to be a URL and uh, I want to make this a bit smaller so I'm going to go into the styling and just set the size to max width of 250 and I want to throw in some text as well so I will use text paragraph and just drop that into my page. And then just to organize this, I'm gonna put all of this inside of a div. All right, so got an image, got some text. Now we wanna connect these to OpenSea. So um, I'll put the link to the OpenSea API docs uh, with the tutorial, but um, they're pretty easy to use. Um, the call that we're going to be using today is called retrieving assets. Um, and you can see here, there's a whole other list of them. Um, but we just need to get a list of assets for our wallet ID. So I can see here, it's a Git call. Um, I can see the different parameters that are available. Um, and the OpenSea API docs are nice because they have a, the ability for you to test it uh, right here in the browser. So if I want to test this out, I can actually just grab my wallet ID from my test page and I can pop this into the owner parameter. So this is the address of the owner of the assets. I want to get my own, so I'm going to pop in my uh, wallet ID. And there's a few other um, parameters we can set, um, like we can sort. Um, I actually want to sort by sale price descending, so I'll leave that as the default. And limit, I only need like 10 assets maybe, so let's just hit 10. And if we hit try it, we can see it loads our um, results. So we can see in our response, we have an object called assets, and this is an array. So it's a list of assets, and each asset has its own um, values. So let's load this into Builder. So... Um, what we're going to do for this is um, we're going to pull our uh, assets from OpenSea once we have a successful connection to MetaMask and we know we have a wallet ID. So in our MetaMask success flow, right now we're setting the, the wallet ID in this text field and hiding the button. I'm going to add another action after this and we're going to use the new API call action. So I'll hit add. I can see here that the default method is git, which is perfect because that's what we need. Um, and then for the URL, I'm just going to grab the URL from the API docs and paste it in here. And then for the parameters, as I mentioned, there's a nice little um, example here of the different parameters. Um, we want to use the owner parameter. So I'm going to type owner as the name and then for the value it's going to be from a variable on the current page and we're going to use that MetaMask wallet variable from our previous lesson. So we will pass it that um, wallet address and that's really all you need 
that's the only required um, parameter. But as I mentioned, there's some optional ones here. I'm also going to add order by. Um, so I will say add parameter and I'll do order by and that'll be sale price. And I'm going to add a limit and we'll say limit 10. So um, that's it for our parameters. The headers we can leave as the default um, for this particular API. And then we look at how we want to handle the response. So we can save the response as a variable or save it into an element. I like to save it as a variable because then I can use it in a lot of different ways. Um, so I'm going to leave it as save response as a variable. Um, I'm going to leave it as the current page and I'm going to give the variable name um, OpenC Assets. So that'll be the variable name. Um, everything else I'm going to leave as the default. Um, you could run a different flow on success or error, but um, I'll leave it like that. So now I have this variable, OpenC Assets, and I want to use that to populate my grid list. So I'll add another action step, and this one will be set value. So element set value, the element I'm going to pick is my grid list, and the value is going to be from a variable on the current page, and that variable is going to be my OpenC assets variable. Now, you can also add a path, which in this case I want to do because my array, my list of items is not at the top level, it's in this object called assets. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to tell Builder that the path I want it to use is assets. Now, the nice thing about Builder, once I do that, it knows to look at the API response and look at assets. It'll see that it's a array and it will pass each item in the array to each row in my grid list. So in my row, I can then access all of these uh, items um, very easily just by passing this key here. So I want the image URL and the name. So uh, if we go back into Builder and go to our row, we can now um, select the image. We'll start there. And image source, we're actually going to use uh, the data tab on the right-hand side. And it's going to say um, from a field or from a variable. We want to use from a variable. And again, the grid list parent is passing to the child all of these items as variables. So I'm going to just copy this image URL and put that in as my variable. So that's all I need to do there. Um, that'll set my image. And then for the text box, same thing. Um, go into data, I'm going to say from a variable, and this time the variable will be name. And again, I know that because in my API response here, I can see the name is the key um, that I want to pull from. So now we've got our name and our image connected to our grid list. Our grid list is being populated from our MetaMask success flow. So after we make our API call to OpenC, we store the results in this variable, OpenC assets. And then in the next step, we set the value of our grid list to OpenC assets dot assets or the path name is assets and this should all work so let's test it out we'll refresh our test page I'm gonna hit connect it connects I see my wallet address is populated and then I see the grid list below gets populated um, so this now shows all of my um, items or at least the first 10 in my wallet and I've got my wallet ID and I can see the name for each one as well. Um, so this is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, the next step that we'll do in the, ne the next uh, tutorial is I want to be able to click on each one of these um, 
NFTs. And as I click on them, they should swap out my profile po photo, my profile pic in the upper left. Um, but this was exactly the result I was hoping for. Hopefully you could see how easy it is um, to connect an API like OpenSea in Builder and pull in your results uh, into a grid list. So I'll catch you in the next one when we uh, pull it all together.